Yellowstone warnings, signs for end of volcanic cycle revealed by Park Ranger, Callum Hoare of Express UK reports, Yellowstone Park Ranger Rebecca Rowland. She revealed during a podcast the warning signs that would suggest Yellowstone has come to the end of its volcanic cycle. Yellowstone volcano, supervolcano as we know, is able to inflict devastation on a worldwide, worldwide scale. It's pinned between the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and the volcano is constantly monitored by the USGS for signs that a supervolcano, a supervolcanic eruption, is on its, is on its way. Uh, now, there, uh, we've had uh, various supervolcanic eruptions in the past two million years. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 640,000 years ago. We've had a major eruption 70,000 years ago. And from what USGS geologists said, another 70 or 80 eruptions since then, and that were overdue for another eruption. Not a super volcanic eruption, eruption but a perhaps a lava flow type of an eruption. Miss Rowland, who is the park ranger for the National Park Service, revealed how this volcanic system goes through cycles. During a podcast in 2017, Rowland was asked when Yellowstone will next erupt. And she's responded, people will always ask that. Every couple of years they talk about how the volcano is going to erupt and it's going to be a cataclysmic affair. But actually a lot of Bob Smith's work and a lot of other scientists' work shows that it did not really affect the eastern half of the United States anyway. And she goes on to explain, I mean, it had a huge ash cloud and covered most of the western United States hundreds of thousands of years ago. The last super eruption Yellowstone volcano had was 640,000 years ago. Roland claimed the warning signs are always there and scientists can determine the severity of an eruption based on where it occurs. She says, as Bob said, you go through volcanic cycles. The geysers, the hot springs, those are evidence of the heat underneath and the end of a volcanic cycle. So what most likely would happen is something like a hydrothermal explosion rather than an eruption. Hydrothermal explosions occur when steam and pressure builds up under a thermal feature. Several times over the past 15 years it's built up and all of a sudden you get huge steam bubbles forming and pushing up on the earth. It just blows. It is very violent and the last one erupted uh, that erupted was in 2009. It was about 75 feet high. The, I don't know what she's talking about here. Which eruption is she talking about? Is she talking about what? Uh, Steamboat geyser or another geyser? We don't know because steamboat goes up to over 300 feet high. Now the USGS website gives more information on what we can expect in the future and it reads, the most likely type of volcanic eruption at Yellowstone will produce lava flows of either rhyolite or basalt. This is what we have in, uh, for example, the video before this one having to do with the re recent earthquakes in uh, the, the coastal volcanic field in uh, Southern California between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. And those are also rhyolite, basaltic, uh, beautiful flows that you can see even on uh, Google Earth if you want to. So, the most likely eruption lava flows of either rhyolite or basalt. These would be significant, but all of these would most certainly remain within the boundary of Yellowstone National Park. Since Yellowstone's last caldera forming eruption 640,000 years ago, about 30 eruptions of rhyolitic lava flows have nearly filled the Yellowstone caldera. Other flows of rhyolite and basalt, a more fluid variety of lava, also have been extruding outside the caldera. The site went on to reveal that while an event of this nature would cause panic inside Yellowstone National Park, of course, as we can understand, it would not have the devastating effects of a super eruption. And it continues saying, an eruption of lava could cause widespread havoc in the park, including fires and the loss of roads and facilities, but more distant areas would probably remain largely unaffected. 
If rhyolitic lava flows do erupt, they could also include explosive phases that might produce significant volumes of volcanic ash and pumice rock. Such eruptions could range in size from smaller than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens through much larger than the 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption. And now we'll have more on this as the hours go by, but let's take a look at what you hear in the background. I have the sound very low, but uh, let's go and see. This is, uh, uh, oh, we had a beautiful explosion. Okay, uh, this is the Stromboli volcano. I'll do another one because now that it's evening, we can see the flaring lava blows, the blasts much more uh, uh, easily because of the difference in the, the light, okay? So I'll, I'll have that as well. You can see some, it's still exploding. Stromboli is still exploding. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.